Hey, I'm with YouTube. Welcome back to a new video with Rams Fan at YT. And today we are looking at championship managers and in particular how good they were as players. There's obviously some very good ones in here Scott Parker, Wayne Mooney, to name a few, but there's obviously some absolute shockers and probably didn't even play football at all. So you decide for yourself in the comments down below if you agree that being a good player will relate to being a good manager, as seems to be a sort of current trend which is emerging. So we're going to go in alphabetical order of clubs. Uh, so that means you start with Barnsley with Poya Asbargi. Uh, I've never actually heard of him before he became manager of Barnsley, to be truthfully honest. And he has never been a player. Uh, he started his footballing career as assistant manager of Dalkurd FF. Lee Boya. As a player, he was a midfielder who featured for Charlton Athletic, Leeds United, West Ham United in two spells, Newcastle United, Birmingham City and Ipswich Town in over 18 years as a professional. He made 397 appearances in the Premier League, took part in semi-finals of the UEFA Cup and UEFA Champions League with Leeds and won the Football League Cup with Birmingham in 2011. Boya was capped once by the England national team. His career was punctuated by various incidents both on and off the field. Tony Mowbray. After playing his first match for the club in 1982, Mowbray became captain of Middlesbrough in 1986, when he was just 22 years old. Affectionately known to Borough fans as Mogger, Mowbray became a legend in Middlesbrough for being a local lad who led the club from liquidation back into the top league of English football within two seasons. In 2007, Mowbray was placed at number seven in a chronicle list of Middlesbrough legends compiled by a local newspaper, The Evening Gazette. The Middlesbrough club fanzine Fly Me to the Moon is named after a quote about Mowbray from ex-Middlesbrough manager Bruce Rioch. If I had to fly to the moon, I'd take Tony Mowbray, my captain, with me. He's a magnificent man. In 1991, after 348 appearances for Borough, Mowbray moved to Scottish club Celtic for £1 million. He later moved on to Ipswich Town, where he played for five years, becoming the team captain. He scored an equalising goal in the 2000 Division 1 playoff final victory against Barnsley. Ipswich won the match 4-2 and secured promotion to the FA Premier League. This match was both Mowbray's Wembley debut and the last of his playing career. Neil Critchley. Critchley's only playing appearance for Crewe came in a 3-0 defeat away at Fulham during the 1999-2000 season. He signed for Ley RMI in 2000 and made three league appearances as a substitute for the club. But that's all he's ever played in his life. Scott Parker. Well, Parker was known as a tough tackling central midfielder. On the international stage, Parker had been among the most notable England players to have been criticised and panned for their hard working, but less technical style of play. Overlooked for major tournaments such as UEFA Euros 2004 and the 2010 FIFA World Cup, Parker was during 2012 a regular presence in the lineup, being partnered with Steven Gerrard. Although England had a relatively disappointing Euro 2012 campaign, some viewed the partnership of Parker and Gerrard as one of the positives. Nigel Pearson Pearson began his playing career with non-league Hena Town before joining 2nd Division at Shrewsbury Town in November 1981. He made his first team debut in a 1-0 defeat at Oldham Athletic on the opening day of the 1982-83 season. Pearson's first Football League goal came on the 12th of March 1983 in a 3 1 win against Barnsley at Gay Meadow. Pearson ended the season with 39 out of a possible 42 starts as Shrewsbury finished in 9th place in the table. The following season, Shrewsbury finished 1 place higher, but injuries restricted Pearson to 26 games. Injury prevented him from playing at all in 1984 85 when Shrewsbury again finished 8th in the table. But he returned in 1985-86, making 35 appearances as Shrewsbury dropped to 17th. In 1986-87, he was an ever-present, 
making 42 appearances and contributing three goals as the Shrews finished in 18th place. He started the next season before being signed by Sheffield Wednesday's manager, Howard Wilkinson, on the 12th of October 1987 for a fee of £250,000. In his six years with Shrewsbury Town, he made a total of 181 appearances in all competitions, scoring five goals. Pearson moved to Sheffield Wednesday in 1987, and he won the League Cup as Sheffield Wednesday captain. During the 1990-91 season, being selected as a man of a match in the final at Wembley. In the same season, he also uh, helped Sheffield Wednesday win promotion to Division 1. During the 1992-93 season, he helped Sheffield Wednesday reach both domestic cup finals, but broke his leg in the League Cup semi-final and therefore could not play in either final. In all, Pearson made more than 200 appearances with the Owls, scoring 14 league goals, including the club's first in the Premier League in a one-all draw with Everton at Goodison Park on the opening day of the 1992-93 season. Middlesbrough manager Brian Robson signed Pearson for £750,000 in 1994. Pearson captained them to promotion twice and to three domestic cup finals, with Pearson retiring from playing in 1998. Steve Morrison Morrison played as a striker and has been described as a player who is always in the right place at the right time. Ahead of the 2008-09 season, Stevenage manager Graham Westley sent Morrison to a training camp to work on his turn of pace. He also described him as a player that no defender would want to play against due to his height, pace and strength. In May 2010, Millwall manager Kenny Jackett said that Morrison had a lot of strength and pace, which he uses on defenders perfectly, as well as referring to him as a physical threat because of his aerial ability. Nick Szapanik of The Times stated that Morrison plays with a fearless all-action style. Mark Robbins Robbins began his career with Manchester United. During this period, he scored a goal against Nottingham Forest, but was subsequently being credited with saving manager Alex Ferguson. After time with Norwich and Leicester, he went on to play for Reading, Manchester City, Warsaw, Rotherham United, Bristol City and Sheffield Wednesday in the Football League. Robbins also played across Europe during spells with FC Copenhagen, Urense and Panionios before finishing his career with Burton Albion in the Conference National. Wayne Rooney Regarded as one of the best players of his generation, Rooney was a creative, energetic forward who combined technical skill with strength and physicality while also excelling in the air, despite being 5 foot 9, or 1.76 metres tall. He was a versatile attacker, capable of playing anywhere along the front line, although his preferred position was as a striker. Rooney was also used as a supporting forward, or even as a winger, as his pace and movement declined as he entered his 30s. He was deployed in deeper, more creative roles as an attacking midfielder, as a deep-lying playmaker, or even as a central or box-to-box midfielder. In particular, under former manager Louis van Gaal, due to his vision, range of passing runs forward from midfield and teamwork. A prolific goalscorer in his prime at Manchester United, Rooney was a powerful striker of the ball and an accurate finisher, capable of scoring both inside and outside of a penalty area, as well as from vo- volleys, uh, and his ball striking ability saw him score from inside his own half for Manchester United, Everton, and DC United. Unfortunately, not for Derby County. He was praised for his work rate and stamina by players, uh, managers, and the media, and was highly regarded for his dedication and willingness to press opponents when possession had been lost in order to win the ball, back the ball and start attacking plays. While not known to be particularly prolific from free kicks, he also often took set pieces and penalties throughout his career, although his record from the spot was somewhat inconsistent. Due to his precocious displays as a teenager, Wayne Rooney was given nicknames Wazza, a reference to former England international Paul Gazza Gascoigne, who was also a gifted player troubled by off-field issues, the Wonder Boy, 
the new Pele and the white Pele. Rooney was a fast, agile player in his youth. However, several injuries throughout his career, in addition to weight issues, affected his speed and mobility as his career progressed, which led to some in the game, accusing him of not quite living up to his full potential. He was warned about his fitness on numerous occasions by his manager, Alex Ferguson, who said of Rooney, he is very stocky. He is going to have to train well all the time. Former Manchester United fitness coach Mick Clegg stated, Wayne didn't see the importance of the gym, really. He'd say, I'm here to play football. Rooney was criticised for his behaviour and aggression on the pitch at times, which led to him to pick up unnecessary bookings. The all-time leading goalscorer for England's national team, Rooney is viewed as one of England's greatest players. In 2017, Gareth Southgate said, You've got very good players, and then there are top players. In my time in the England setup, Paul Gascoigne, Paul Scholes, and Rooney just had that little bit more than all the others. And we are talking high level people there players like Steven Gerrard, Frank Lampard, and David Beckham. Marco Silva. Silva developed into a professional footballer with local CF Oz. Belenenses. In a 15-year career, he only appeared in two Premier League games, one with that club and another with SC Campo Marionse. From 2000 to 2005, he alternated between the second and third divisions, representing CD Trofense, Rio Ave FC, SC Braga's B team, SC Salguerlos and Odi Velas FC. In the 2005 off-season, Silva joined JD Estoril Pereira, where he remained until his retirement six years later, always in the second tier. He played his ma- last match on the 2nd of January 2011, a 1-0 home loss against FC Penafiel in the group stage at the t- of the Taca de la Liga. Uh, Silva retired in June at the age of 34, amassing second division totals of 152 games and two goals for three clubs. Carlos Corboran. Corboran represented Valencia CF as a youth. At the age of 23, however, after only representing the team's reserves and playing no higher than the Turquera division, he decided to retire to pursue his passion for coaching. Grant McCann. Finding it hard to break into West Ham's first team, McCann had loan spells at Livingston and Notts County before moving to Cheltenham Town in another loan deal in 2000. Despite making only a handful of substitute appearances for West Ham and never starting a game, he is remembered for scoring an unfortunate and bizarre own goal during an infamous 7-1 away defeat to Blackburn Rovers on the 14th of October 2001. After coming off the bench, McCann attempted a clearance from inside his own penalty area, but the ball somehow spun backwards behind him and passed Shaka Hislop in of a West Ham goal. This turned out to be McCann's final appearance for West Ham. After another loan deal took him back to Cheltenham in 2002, the move was made permanent during the January 2003 at transfer window, when he moved from West Ham for £55,000, no, £50, a record transfer fee for Cheltenham Town. McCann went on to make 155 league appearances for the Gloucestershire club. He made only four substitute appearances for the Hammers. He joined Barnsley on loan on deadline day on the 23rd of November 2006, in a contract that expired on the 1st of January 2007. On his debut against Ipswich Town, he scored a 92nd minute winner in Simon Davies' first game as a caretaker boss. The two clubs agreed a fee of £100,000 and McCann moved to Barnsley permanently on the 2nd of January 2007. At the same time, this was a record fee for an outbound player from Cheltenham. In January 2008, McCann left Barnsley to sign for championship rival Scunthorpe United for an undisclosed fee. On the 24th of May 2010, Peterborough United announced that they had beaten off competition from a host of championship clubs to secure the services of McCann on a three-year contract. On the 1st of August, McCann was named captain for the 2010-11 League One season, taking the role from George Boyd. 
He continued to hold this position for the 2011-12 season. McCann has the rare achievement of being promoted via a playoff three times, once each with three clubs at three stadiums. With Cheltenham Town at the Millennium Stadium in Cardiff, with Scunthorpe United at Wembley Stadium in London, and with Peterborough United at Old Trafford in Manchester. On the 30th of April 2012, McCann with seven other Peterborough players were placed on a transfer list by manager Darren Ferguson. On the 14th of January 2015, McCann returned to his native country to join Northern Irish Football League Premiership side Linfield on a free transfer after his contract at Peterborough was terminated by mutual consent. He signed an initial six-month contract to last until the end of the 2014-15 season. McCann, who made close to 200 appearances in all competitions for Posh, had been assisting with the coaching of Peterborough's youth side in the weeks prior to his departure, but was keen to continue playing regularly. His brother Ryan McCann had previously played for Linfield between 2002 and 2005, winning several trophies with the Blues, including the league title in 2004 and the the Setanta, I think it is, Cup in 2005. On the 23rd of February 2015, McCann was linked to a coaching role at his former club, Peterborough United, following the sacking of Darren Ferguson two days earlier. It was assumed that McCann would balance his role at Peterborough with his playing time at Linfield. However, it was later confirmed that McCann would be ending his stay at Linfield after just six weeks. During his short spell at the club, he made six appearances in all competitions, scoring once against Bani Mina United in a league game. On the 26th of February 2015, Linfield confirmed that McCann's contract had been terminated with immediate effect, facilitating his return to Peterborough in a coaching capacity until at least the end of the 2014-15 season. Nathan Jones. He began his career with the youth team at local club Cardiff City. But Jones was released by Cardiff in the summer of 1991 and went on to play for Maysteg Park, Ton Pentre and football conference club Murphy Tidfill. He spent two years at Penny Darren Park before signing for David Pleats, Luton at Town in July 1995 for a fee of £10,000. However, he soon became homesick at Luton and so moved to Spain to join Secunda Division Club Badajoz. I don't know how that helps with homesickness, to be fair. Who were managed by Englishman Colin Addison. The team narrowly missed out on promotion to La Liga in 1995-96, missing out on extra extra medulla by one goal. Jones dropped down to the second division B in 1996-97, joining the Manfia and helping them gain promotion via the playoffs. Jones credits his time in Spain as a major impact on his life and career. Jones returned to England to play for Southend United in 1997. He spent three seasons at Southend, including a loan at Scarborough in 1998-99 season, where he was part of a team relegated by Jimmy Glass's memorable goal for Carlisle United. He moved to Brighton and Hove Albion, where he made over 150 appearances during his five seasons at the club, achieving three promotions. Jones moved to Yeovil Town in 2005 and established himself as a manager of the first team. His seven-year association with the club included captaining the team at Wembley Stadium for the 2007 Football League 1 playoff final, resulting in a 2-0 defeat to Blackpool. Jones started his FA Level 3 coaching badge in the summer of 2008 and became first team coach of Yeovil Town Ladies from November 2007, alongside manager Steve Phillips and assistant manager Nigel Wolf. On the 18th of February 2009, Jones was confirmed as player assistant manager of Yeovil, alongside player manager Terry Skibberton. Following Skibberton's replacement by Gary Johnson, Jones was demoted to the role of first team coach. On the 1st of June 2012, Jones left Yeovil Town after seven years and having played 211 matches for the club by mutual consent. Chris Wilder. Wilder started his football career as a trainee at Southampton and was released without making it into the first team. He moved on to Sheffield United in August 1986 
and in December 1987, defender Wilder was sent off for a crew tackle on Millwall's Jimmy Carter in a season which saw the Sheffield club relegated to the third division. The following season, Wilder was on the receiving end, being elbowed in the face. Swansea's Brian Wade received a free match ban for violent conduct as a result. Wilder was a regular in the team that finished second and therefore clinched promotion back to the second division at the first attempt in the 1988-89 season. And was also part of a squad that gained a further promotion in the season after. This time back to the first division, after an absence of 14 years. Wilder was a regular during the following season back in the first division, but thereafter found appearances harder to come by. Hence Wilder left for nearby Rotherham United in 1992, staying for a further four years and amassing his largest number of games and goals for one club. In 1998, Wilder returned to Sheffield United, and a year later, he was brought to Brighton by Mickey Adams before joining Halifax Town that same year. Gary Rowett He started his career at Cambridge United as a product of their youth system. He was part of a Cambridge team which achieved fifth place in the 1991-92 second division, which remains the club's best league finish to date. They were also playoff semi-finalists that year, and he was also a part of their best ever League Cup run, where they reached the quarterfinals the following season. After three seasons at the Abbey Stadium, he earned a move to the Premiership with Everton in March 1994 for £200,000. Everton won the FA Cup in his first full season, but Rowett was not involved in the 1995 FA Cup run or the final against Manchester United. After failing to break into the first team, Rowett went on loan to Blackpool before being sold to Derby County in part exchange for Craig Short. Rowett spent three seasons at Derby, followed by a two-year spell with Birmingham City, where he helped the club reach the playoffs. In June 2000, Rowett returned to the Premier League by joining Leicester City. Southampton had been interested in him and bid £2 million, but could not better Leicester's £3 million due to the costs of their new stadium. He competed in the UEFA Cup, where they lost in the first round on penalties to Red Star Belgrade. His first top-flight goal for the club came on the 3rd of February 2001, where they won the game 2-1 against Chelsea at Filbert Street within seconds of the opposition's goal by Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank. In May 2002, he switched to Charlton Athletic for £3.5 million. Charlton manager Alan Kerbishley had wanted to sign at Rowett for years, but he chose at Leicester as they were closer to his home and competing the UEFA Cup. His only goal for them earned a one or home draw against Sunderland on the 3rd of November 2002. He retired from professional football in July 2004 due to a knee injury, weeks after his defensive partner, Richard Rufus, having made only 13 league appearances in two years at the Valley. He did return to play, though, for Burton Albion in the Conference National, having been persuaded by manager Nigel Clough in 2005. Steve Cooper In the late 1990s, Cooper joined Wrexham, but did not make a competitive appearance for the club. He was signed by manager Brian Flynn, who suggested Cooper pursue a coaching career instead of playing professionally. Cooper later played for the New Saints, Rill, Bangor City and Portman Dog in the Welsh Football Leagues. He featured for Bangor City in the UEFA Cup against FK Sartid Smedarivo in 2002. Darren Ferguson His father, Alex Ferguson, brought him through the youth ranks at Manchester United, giving him his first team debut in 1990. Ferguson played in United's first 15 games of the new Premier League in 1992-93, during the absence of the injured Brian Robson. And although he did not start a league game after November, he played enough games to qualify for a titled winner's medal at the end of the season, which at the time was a minimum of 10 matches. However, his first team chances were very limited, in 1993-94, and he was transferred to Wolverhampton Wanderers for £250,000. His final season at Old Trafford brought just five first-team appearances, and with the introduction of squad numbers of the Premier League that campaign, he had been issued with a number 18 shirt, which would next be worn by Simon Davies. 
Pete or Davis. Uh, he spent five years at Wolves, during which he qualified for the Division 1 playoffs twice, and finished in the top 10 on four occasions, but never gained promotion to the Premier League, and he left Wolves in 1999 to sign for Dutch side Sparta Rotterdam. But he made only 14 appearances. Between 1999 and 2007, he played for Wrexham, making 310 appearances, scoring 51 goals. Ferguson captained them to win promotion to Division 2 in 2002-3. He also led the club to its first national trophy in English football, the Football League Trophy, scoring the second goal himself in a 2-0 win over Southend United in 2004-5. Ryan Lowe. Lowe played for Liverpool's youth team between twelve and uh, between the ages of twelve and thirteen before breaking his ankle. He returned to the team aged fifteen before leaving the club. While at Liverpool, he formed a friendship with Steven Gerrard. After Liverpool, Lowe played with Southport's youth team and non-league Liverpool teams Sandon Docks and Waterloo Dock before joining Burskoff. He moved into the Football League with Shrewsbury Town in time for 2000-2001. After almost five years with the Shrews, which included a season in the Football Conference, Lowe switched to League Two side Chester City on the 22nd of March 2005. He spent a year at Chester, which included scoring twice in his shop FA Cup 3-0 win over Nottingham Forest on the 3rd of December 2005, before leaving the club by mutual consent shortly after the return of manager Mark Wright. Lowe joined League One side Crew Alexandra in time for 2006-07 season. He enjoyed a successful debut for the Railway Men, scoring the opening goal, assisting David Vaughan's goal and earning the man of the match in Crew's 2 all draw with Northampton Town on the 5th of August 2006. Lowe continued his form over the first few games of the season, scoring a further two goals in late August. However, the arrival of Rodney Jack to the club saw him losing his starting place for much of September. He returned to the starting lineup on the 30th of September 2006 against Carlisle United. Lowe scored his only hat trick for Crew as they ran out 5 1 winners at the Alexandra Stadium. After spells in and out of crew, the Crew side, Lowe joined Stockport County on loan on the 27th of March 2005. His transfer wasn't made permanent and he wasn't included in the side which clinched promotion in the playoff final against Rochdale at the Wembley Stadium. On the 2nd of July 2008, Lowe returned to Chester on a two-year deal, but becoming the club's fifth summer signing after Anthony Barry, Jay Harris, David Mannix and Paul Taylor. Lowe scored twice, including a penalty, in his first home game back for Chester against Leeds United in a 5-2 loss in the League Cup on the 12th of August 2008, and repeated the feat in a 5-1 thrashing of Barnet later in the month. Lowe went on to comfortably finish as Chester's leading scorer, with 18 goals, 16 of those in the league, in a season, which ended with a side suffering relegation from League 2. He received a close player of the season award before the final match of the campaign against Darlington. The following week, it was announced Lowe had left Chester by mutual agreement, with several football league clubs interested in signing him. On the 10th of June 2009, Burry confirmed the signing of Lowe on free transfer, and Lowe scored his first goal for Burry on the 18th of August 2009, away at Hereford United in a 3-1 win. Also, Lowe scored in Burry's 1-0 victory over rivals Rochdale in the fixture at Gig Lane. He scored his 100th league goal on the 9th of October 2010, bagging a brace against local rivals at Clinton Stanley. At the start of the 2010-11 season, he was named vice-captain by Alan Neil. On the 1st of March 2011, Lowe broke a 53-year-old club record by scoring in eight consecutive league games in a 3-0 victory over Shrewsbury Town at the Greenhouse Meadow. After a goal in the following 3-0 victory over Hereford on the 5th of March, he extended his record to over record to nine games. On the 25th of April, he scored Burry's third in a 3-2 win over league leaders Chesterfield in the 87th minute, promoting his side to League One. 
On the 31st of August 2011, Lowe joined Berry's fellow League One team, Sheffield Wednesday, for an undisclosed six-figure fee. On the 1st of August 2012, Lowe signed for League One side Milton Keynes Dons for an undisclosed fee and was signed on a two-year deal after limited chances at Hillsborough. On the 21st of June 2013, Lowe agreed to cancel his Milton Keynes contract and agreed to join Tranmere Rovers on a free transfer with a two-year deal. On the 19th of, March, 19th of May 2014, Barry announced that they had re-signed Lowe on a two-year contract. On the 23rd of November 2015, Lowe rejoined his former club crew Alexandra on loan until the 5th of January 2016. And in his first appearance, he scored a stoppage time winner at Colchester United. He signed a full contract with Crewe in May 2016, and on the 6th of August, he made his third scoring uh, crew debut with the first goal in a 2-1 win at Stevenage. Three days later, Lowe scored both crew goals in a 2-1 League Cup tie with win at Sheffield United. In January 2017, Lowe returned to Bury in a player-coach role, following the sacking of manager Lee Clark in uh, October 2017. Lowe was appointed caretaker manager, taking charge for Bury's FA Cup first round tie at National League side Woking. He remained in charge for six games, with two wins, two draws and two defeats, until the 22nd of November, when Chris Lucchetti was uh, appointed Clark's successor, with Lowe becoming player coach again. In January 2018, after Lucchetti was sacked, Lowe was again appointed caretaker manager this time until the end of the season, with Ryan Kidd as his assistant. He decided to end his playing career to concentrate on management and coaching. His last match as a player was for Bury against Bristol Rovers on Friday the 30th of March 2018 in League One. Mark Warburton A defender, Warburton began his playing career as an apprentice at Leicester City under Frank McClintock and later dropped into non-league football with Enfield. Warburton took a dislike to the methods of McClintock's successor at Leicester, Jock Wallace, later saying he was a Marine. We had run some sand dunes, running until we threw up. I learned a lot from that, never treating a player that way. Warburton had a successful four years at Enfield, winning the 1981-82 FA Trophy and the 1982-83 Alliance Premier League title. He battled for the right-back spot at the club with Trevor Savage, and scored his only league goal for the club past Boston United goalkeeper Kevin Blackwell in a 2 0 win during the 1982-83 season. After leaving Enfield in 1985, Warburton later played for Isthmian League side Boreham Wood, Scottish non-league side Stonyburn Juniors, and also spent time playing in Charlotte and Chicago men's leagues while living in the United States. Crucial injuries ended his playing career. Veljko Pornovic. Pornovic made his professional debut at 17 with FK Partizan. The following summer, he moved to Spain, where he would stay for most of the following decade, playing for a host of clubs. Starting in the 1995-96 season with modest CA Marbella and reaching the 1998-99 UEFA Cup Winners' Cup final with RCD Mallorca, with whom he, spent, he scored five league goals in the campaign to help the Balearic Islands team finish third, as well as having three separate stints with Atletico Madrid. Pornovic had his best year in 2002-3 with CD Tenerife in the Segunda Division, netting 18 times in 38 appearances, although the insular side uh, eventually ranked 8th. After a return to Atletico and a brief stay in Germany with Hanover 96, he joined the Chitafe CF for the 2005-06 top flight, enjoying his finest season in La Liga by scoring 10 goals in 30 league matches to help the Madrid outskirts club to the ninth place. During... Ju- Due to the years spent in the country, he received a Spanish passport in 2006. Pornovich was signed by Russian Premier League FC Ruben Kazan in March 2007, after falling out of favour with Jeff Tafe's coach 
Bernd Schuster. The following year, he agreed a two and a half year deal with UD Almeria, Almeria in January. His debut was a, a sour one, really, playing 20 minutes off the bench against Racing de Santander in a 1 0 away defeat, while also receiving two yellow cards in one minute. He would score on two occasions towards the season's end in a 4 2 away loss against former team Getafe and in the, la- the last match day, a 3-1 victory at RC D Espanyol. On the 12th of July 2008, it was announced that Pornovic signed a two-year deal with his former club at Partizan. On the 13th of August, he scored in a two-all draw with Turkey's Fenerbahce SK in a UEFA Champions League qualifying round. On the 24th of December, however, he announced a decision to retire from the game. On the 29th of June 2009, Pornovic went on trial with New York Red Bulls, but eventually turned down a one-year contract offer. In June 2011, after nearly three years out of football, the 33-year-old signed a deal with another North American club, Philadelphia Union, after a trial stint. He scored his first goal with his new team late in the month in a 3-2 win over Chivas USA. Pornovic officially announced his retirement for the second time on the 19th of January 2011. Pornovic made his debut for Serbia and Montenegro in a 2-1 friendly win over Mexico uh, on the 13th of February 2002. His only other cap came two years later against Northern Ireland, another exhibition match, and he scored in the one all draw in Belfast. Paul Heckingbottom He started his football career at Manchester United as a trainee, but joined Sunderland in 1995 after failing to gain a professional contract. He had loan spells at Scarborough, Hartlepool United and Darlington without featuring for Sunderland before joining Starlington permanently in 1993. He made 126 appearances, scoring six goals before catching the attention of first division side Norwich City, who signed him in 2002 on a three-year contract. Hacking Motton made just 16 appearances for Norwich, including only seven starts resulting in him cancelling his contract with the club by mutual consent after one year. He subsequently signed for Bradford City in July 2003 and was named their Player of the Year at the end of his first season. Bradford, however, were relegated to League One at the end of the 2003-04 season. And Hackingbottom left to join League One club Sheffield Wednesday during the close season. Hackingbottom was well favoured under both Wednesday managers Chris Turner and Paul Sturrock making a total of 41 appearances at left-back in his first season, more than any other player that year. He also scored four goals, helping the Owls to promotion to the championship by the playoff final at the end of the 2004-05 season. Due to an injury sustained in pre-season, he was put out of contention for the first 16 games of the 2005-06 season. When he returned to fitness, new signing John Hills had begun to make the left-back spot his own. An injury to Hills left Heckingbottom able to restake his claim on the team, but he only managed a four-game streak before once again succumbing to injury. This time, Peter Gilbert taking his place in the squad. Stoke had allowed Heckingbottom a chance to prove himself in an FA Cup third-round game against Charlton Athletic. He scored both of Wednesday's goals in a 4-2 defeat at Hillsborough, but this was not enough to establish himself as the club's first choice left back. On the 13th of January 2006, Heckingbottom was sent on loan with a view to a permanent move to his boyhood club Barnsley. He played an important role in the club's promotion campaign and win over Swansea City in the League One playoff final, scoring in the 4-3 penalty shootout victory that secured the promotion to the championship. Heckingbottom played in 31 games for Barnsley the next season as they comfortably avoided relegation. He scored once during his spell at Barnsley in a 1-0 win over Tranmere Rovers on the 18th of February 2006. In July 2007, Heckingbottom returned to Bradford City on loan until the 1st of January 2008. He played in all 23 league games during his loan spell, only missing out on an FA Cup tie against Tranmere Rovers through suspension following a red card in a one all draw with Stockport County. A week after his loan deal expired, his contract at Barnsley was cancelled by mutual consent, 
and he signed a permanent 18 month deal at Bradford City. He missed his first league game of the 2007-8 season with four games left, when an ankle injury prevented him from playing against Brentford on the 12th of April 2008. Hecky Motten's place was taken by Luke O'Brien, who made his Bradford debut in a 2 all draw. He played in the club's first nine league games of the 2008-9 season, but was sent off in a one all draw with Luton Town for two bookable offences. His place was again taken by Youngst O'Brien, and although Hecky Motten returned for an FA Cup game against Milton Keynes Dons, he suffered ten- tendonitis, which kept him out for five months. Bradford opted against offering Hecking Bottom contract extension and he left the club in May 2009. Hecking Bottom signed for Conference National Club Mansfield Town on the 2nd of June 2009, marking his first foray in the game outside the Football League. He sustained a hamstring injury in pre season and did not play until October, in a 1 0 win over Forest Green Rovers. 11 months from when he last played a game of football. He became a regular in the Mansfield lineup, and he scored his first and only Mansfield goal against Crawley Town on the 14th of November 2009. On the 1st of February 2010, Heckingbottom joined Gateshead on loan until the end of the season, making his debut on the 13th of February away at Hayes and Yeading United. <coughs> Heckingbottom signed for Gateshead on a permanent basis on the 26th of May 2010. He made 23 appearances in all competitions during the 2010-11 season, or was released on the 4th of May 2011. He spent the 2011-12 season with Harrogate Town, making 21 appearances in the Conference North without scoring. Michael O'Neill He played youth football for Ballymena Team Star United for four years, before joining intermediate club Chimney Corner as a 14-year-old. His manager Alec McKee, didn't think it was right to try and integrate a 14 stroke 15 year old into his first team and thought he should play for Coleraine's reserve side. O'Neill was brought into Coleraine by former Northern Ireland internationals Bertie Peacock and Jim Platt, making his debut in the Irish League at the age of 15. I was a regular in the side by the age of 18. After playing against Dundee United in a UEFA Cup tie in 1987, O'Neill came close to joining the Scottish club. In October 1987, he was signed by Newcastle United for a £100,000 fee. After scoring 13 goals in 22 appearances during his first season and helping Newcastle finish 8th in the 1st Division, O'Neill suffered from injuries and loss of form in his second season, which saw Newcastle relegated to the 2nd Division. O'Neill joined Dundee United in August 1989, for a club record fee of £350,000. A difficult relationship with manager Jim McLean came to a head in 1991 when O'Neill refused to extend his contract and was dropped from the first team. He left the club in 1993, joining Hibernian, where he had three successful seasons under the management of Alex Miller. O'Neill agreed to join Austrian club Sturm Graz on a Bosman free transfer in 1996, but changed his mind after an off to return to English football with Coventry City, where he spent just over two years. After spending time on loan to Aberdeen and Reading during the 1997-98 season, O'Neill left Coventry to sign for Wigan Athletic in September 1998. He played for St Johnston, Portland Timbers, Clyde Bank, Glen Torren, and Air United. Russell Martin. He joined Brighton and Hove Albion's Youth Academy before leaving by mutual consent in early 2004 to join Isthmian League Division 1 Southside, Lewes. He then had trials with several clubs, including Charlton Athletic. Martin joined Wickham Wanderers in 2004 and he made his debut in a 2-1 home victory over Cambridge United on the 7th of August 2004. He then went on to make more than 10, appear- 10 more appearances sorry, uh, during the 2004-05 season. Ahead of the 2006-07 season, Martin signed a new two-year contract with the club. In the following season, he played in the League 2 semi-final against Stockport County, which Wickham lost 2-1 on aggregate. On the 29th of May 2008, 
Martin moved to Peterborough United, who had just been promoted to League One. He signed a three-year contract, and Martin became the club's youngest ever captain after taking over from Craig Morgan. In his first season at Peterborough, Martin captained the club to prom- gain promotion to the Championship. Following Mark Cooper's appointment as a replacement for Darren Ferguson in November 2009, Martin joined Norwich City on loan. On the 4th of January 2010, his transfer was made permanent, and he joined Norwich on a two-and-a-half-year contract. Martin scored his first goal for Norwich in the 3-1 defeat to Doncaster Rovers, with a diving header on the 14th of September 2010. He scored the only goal in a 1-0 victory over Championship League leaders Queen's Park Rangers on the 1st of January 2011, and a last-minute equaliser against Cardiff City, leading fans to dub him the Cafu of the Championship, or the Norfolk Cafu, in honour of Cafu. On the 7th of May 2011, he was the runner-up for the Norwich City Player of the Year award to winner Grant Holt, in a season where he played every minute of each game. After an impressive first season in the Premier League with Norwich, filling in a well at centre-back during some games, Martin signed a new three-year deal in June 2012. On the 29th of December 2012, Martin scored two goals against Manchester City in a 4-3 home defeat. On the 9th of July 2013, Martin agreed a new three-year trans- a new three-year deal with the club. On the 10th of August 2013, he was officially named the club captain. In the 2013 interview, Martin revealed his desire to take up management after the end of his playing career, stating I was eventually a love to come and manage Norwich. On the 22nd of November 2014, Martin made his 200th appearance for Norwich against his hometown club, Brighton and Hove Albion. He scored Norwich's second goal in a 3 all draw. Norwich were promoted for Premier League in the 2014-15 season via the playoffs, a year after the relegation, but were relegated again after just one year or one season back in the top division. Martin made his 300th appearance for Norwich on the 21st of April 2017 in a 2-0 win against Brighton and Hove Albion. He signed a new contract with Norwich in July 2017 but then had few first-team appearances during the 2017-18 season. In January 2018, Martin moved on loan to Scottish Premiership club Rangers. He made his competitive debut for the club on the 24th of January in a 2-0 win against Aberdeen. Martin was one of four players to make their first appearance for Rangers in that game. He scored his first and only goal for Rangers in a 2-0 win against Hearts on the 24th of February 2018. Following his loan with Rangers, Martin left Norwich City on the 31st of August 2018 after his contract was terminated by mutual consent. He uh, made 309 appearances for Norwich, placing him 22nd in the club's all-time appearance list. Martin signed for League One club Warsaw in October 2018 in a player-coach role. He left by mutual consent in January 2019 for family reasons, having made 12 appearances for the club. On the 15th of January 2019, Martin joined League 2 club Milton Keynes Dons on a short-term deal until the end of the season, and played a key role in the club clinching promotion on the final day of the season. Following the departure of manager Paul Tisdale on the 2nd of November 2019, Martin was appointed as his successor in his first managerial position the following day, and later announced his retirement as a player to concentrate on the role. Valerin Isnail During his playing career, Ismail played for Racing Strasbourg, Crystal Palace, RC Lenz, Werder Bremen, Bayern Munich and Hanover 96. As a player, he won the Coupe de France, the Coupe de la Ligue twice, the Bundesliga twice, as well as the DFB Pokal on two occasions. And thank you very much for watching this video. Please subscribe if you're new around here. I know it's quite a long one today. I'm certainly feeling it in my voice for speaking that long. We've got the history of uh, Cheltenham Town, I think it is, coming up on uh, Monday, which will be absolutely great for all them Cheltenham fans out there. Uh, and then also, I'm thinking of doing the same league one. There's some quite big players, well, who are now managers like Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank in League One. 
And I've got a fair few League One fans out there because of a history of club thing I am doing at the moment. Uh, but see you around.